Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We just got back from our adventure driving home from uh, Midwest, and we have a truck that is properly full. Um, it is very full. It is probably close to the weight limit, if not exceeding it, but it's right there. Shh, don't say that out loud. Yeah, it's, it's right at the weight limit uh, for sure. There is a ton of stuff in here. Um, I can't even remember what the hell we got. It's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna do our typical deal, unload all of this, get it all upstairs into our warehouse space, and then we'll uh, start going through everything, organizing, and then we'll pull out some of There's literally so much stuff in here, we couldn't go through it all in weeks. So we're gonna pull out some of our favorite stuff in the boxes and uh, lay some of it out and show you some of the highlights. And, uh, and you guys get to see all the crap that we accumulated in a matter of basically two days. It's pretty crazy, so let's get started. So it's all upstairs. So you yeah. Have the one guy that's leading on you all the time. <laughs> so now we have to kind of go through this. We have to go through this stuff. So this is the one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done. Done. done <laughs> but this is just all speedy. Literally, this is the stuff that was in the basement. Just some of it. But this is just the loose aluminum. That so that's found. all heads. This is all intakes, and this is a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, there's some heads down halfway, and then it's filled up with, with uh, intake. So this stuff, we're gonna lay all this out. We already know this is good stuff, um, but there's a lot, all of these boxes. There's 14 pallets. And we did not go through like any of these boxes. There's maybe a few that Mike packed in the truck, but all these like, yeah, store water gauges. And there should be a Kong one somewhere in around this. Air cleaners and stuff. So what we're gonna probably do is we're gonna quickly go through this stuff and make pallets of stuff that um, like Mike always does goes through slowly and individually lists items and all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna kind of buzz through the stuff. I always, I try and do this now where um, I break up with the stuff early so that I'm not, if I'm here digging through the stuff as Mike's listing it all, I'll keep way too much. So <laughs> we we kind of like, what we do is we buzz through the stuff, the, the really good stuff or stuff we can use at the shop, take it right to the shop and then we just kind of let Mike slowly go through, list, advertise, sell the stuff as we go. So we're gonna buzz through the boxes, kind of make some different pallets of uh, mechanical and, and interior and exterior parts and speed equipment and whatever. And, uh, and then we'll pull out some highlights and lay them all out. And then here at the end of the video, as we always do, we'll kind of go through and show you some of the, uh, some of the highlights. There's just so much it'll be hard to show. But That'll be probably be tomorrow, because this the, is gonna be a multi-day process. Yes, this is, gonna be, this is probably the fir one of the first ones. It's a multi-day process to unload and actually go through this stuff. So it's gonna be, uh, a lot of fun. So we got a little bit of work ahead of us to do some. This is like Christmas for all of us. <laughs> I wish I had this many packages at Christmas when I was a kid. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a banner. This is banner number one. Yeah, there's a bunch of banners and a shelf up top. He didn't tell us exactly what they were. He just said, these are yours. <laughs> right, so. You want to take this in? I'll hold the. Oh, Olds. 74 Olds. C74 Olds. That's cool. C74 Olds. <laughs> wow, man. The 70s were a tricky time. Look at it. Yeah. Somebody that's got a 
got an old to that arrow. We psyched on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not many people thought to keep that. Right. Old banner, 48 golden anniversary. Whoa. I'm hoping this is 1948. <laughs> Chrome generator covers. What do they look like? I don't know. Are they? Dude, these are. Can I see one? Is it just a round piece of sheet metal? Yeah, it's a slip over. Yeah, just we could sell those. That's. Oh, these are 1948. I'm sure. Oh yeah. They're way old. Golden anniversary. 1940. Oh eight. Damn. There we go. Yours is what? First with hydromatic drive, first with Futuromic styling. Oldsmobile. Dude, these are like. Olds, you're into the Olds, uh, That's so sick. Since you're in the Olds mode right now, here, I'll roll that up. I got something for you to play with. And I don't mean what's in my left hand. I'm not reaching in your pocket. No. You would for this. <laughs> I probably saw it. What is it? Let's see it. Oldsmobile. Yes, I saw that. Yep. Chromed out. It's yeah. Distributor. Distributor. Yep. I told him I wanted that. He's like, you want that? I'm like, hell yeah. So uh, which, you want that over here on the table? Yeah, that can go on the first or second table. Awesome. So what's in there? In there, a box of treasures. Oh. Of <laughs> what isn't in there? Lots of... Uh, it's all things chrome and polished. V8. It's got a V8 logo cutting it. Scott Tops. Dude, this is just a bin of goodies. That's basically yeah, Matt's that's keeper box. Good. No, not exactly, not exactly. You'd be surprised. Great. The Scott Tops, I believe, are actually reproduction, if I'm being picky. Block. I thought they were. Yeah, I spotted that right away. Yep, you can tell by how they're machined. Yeah. Still killer, but... Great. Bottinger. So these... Um, those are Corvette. Those are they? Are they? Okay. They're, they're the original Corvette. I thought Spanish. those were the ones yeah. that you so had this before, I want. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, these I keep because they're just because they're cool. If there's yeah, a set, if there's a set of them, well, that, I see another one right there. We'll have to go through the air. Match that other one that we yes, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All the good old scoops. <laughs> it's like a kid in a candy store. Uh -huh. This is mine. Mine. This is mine. And this is mine. Oh, so that's Ooh, Edmunds. Edmunds air cleaner. That's killer. Nice. I think I have one or two or three, but so. It's nice to have three or four. Yeah, oh, yeah. five or six. So a bunch of this we could put on the table for mm -hmm. display. Um, like the better stuff and then all the like kind of whatever air cleaners, but yep. like that can go on the table, all yep. the really good stuff can, but the gotcha. universal. The body can go on the table as well. Yep. Oh, I had another hot air kit, hot air heater kit there. No, you're he said, I, I wanted to look at it, he's like, you can unravel that when you get home. <laughs> Damn, it's huge. Yeah, it is. Might need your help, George. Yeah, we might need another a couple more sets of hands. Yeah, we might need. Still going. <laughs> Folded in half, too. Yeah, it is. Still going. It's Holy like an old carny one, or? Holy shit. Old mobile. Holy crap. I don't think the camera should catch it. I don't oh, think Oh, yeah, so. there you go. 1938. What's it say? Now? 1938 Oldsmobile, now on display. Holy crap. That's by your hand there. Oh yeah. Oh, he's okay. hiding it. It's still going. <laughs> what do you got there, Matt? Let a me head, see. A head again. 1938 Oldsmobile. Let, now. let George pan so we can get the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that is wild. It's he was huge. like, you can unravel that when you get home. You'll like that. And we're like, what is it? You'll, you'll see. <laughs> Don't yeah. breathe That's on cool. It. Great. Is that wow. his canvas? Yeah. Painted on canvas? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Probably won't find another one of these anywhere. Oh, I'm betting not. Oh, shit. 
MGM can. I'll take a look at it. This is Whoa, cool. That is cool. Oldsmobile original factory factory paint touch up applicator. Put, put that over there. Well, we can get rid of the bag because it's literally just going to be. Yeah, it's just coming for us. You're standing for that. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I, got, I got a little spell back. <laughs> there we go. You take the got there, Pete. Uh, Go with the automotive from Illinois. Still in the box, a brand new exhaust cutout. Is there only one of them? Yeah. Oh. They probably designed it to not have a fuel pump, and they put that there so you can handle it. Or they couldn't get the wrench on to tighten the car, so right. they broke it out. <laughs> we gonna fix that problem. Who brought this boring? Olds intake. Uh, All right. Let's put this off to the side for now. Boring. Do, are we going alphabetical order too? <laughs> I mean, I don't think we have all that. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, yeah, no. how, how about like a chronological order? No, we don't get that. No, none of that. Okay. Here, well, there's a Fenton pile. I'm calling that the Fenton pile. Yeah. Okay. Put some over here. On the Evans pile. And. There's I was going to say, Edelbrock. Always put his serial numbers on. Yeah. That's Edmunds? I heard somebody say Edmunds. Yeah, I just put an Edmunds okay. down. Oh, right uh, look. We're going to start the Edmunds collection. Cyclone. Oh, where'd that Eddie Myers go? There's a Fenton. Where'd the Eddie Myers top go? I, I put it back in the... It's in the end uh, bin no, there on that's top. That's not it. Nope. Nope, that's a different one. I Battersby? Yeah, I know it's not. That's an unusual. Yes. Cyclone. I don't know if there was a cyclone now. Oh. Is there a wine pile? Yes. Oh, right here. Smith's Smith Islands. That's an unusual oddball. Battersby? That's cool with all those unusual. That's the Schrader. Oh, there's multiple. Oh, is this, this is the one we got the other time. Yeah, Nixon, I got one of those. And yeah, one card empty. Right. Down. So let's uh let's yeah, condense this a little bit. Yeah. So roof. So we should probably or would you like prefer them all to face the same way? Uh, now that I saw it, I cannot see it. This one needs to be spun. That's the only one. Well, this whole row is fine. Yeah, well. Yeah. I'll fix it. I'll fix it for you guys. <laughs> Once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> What's the final point, Steve? 66. <laughs> you know how many I counted on the picture? Just counting in 62. Yeah. I wasn't far off. Nope. There was a couple of duplicates he didn't uh, he didn't photograph. And there was one. This one's from the second estate. I found the 62 on the picture. Even if you kind of like overlap just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that works. Yeah. That's fine, just like that. That's how it's your pile. I don't think there's multiples of the, any of that stuff. There's not. It's it's rare to find one. They're just adapters. You just put these in the cell cell skid. No, yeah, they're uh, they're the ones that are special. Those are like what we needed for the caddy. That's oh, like, okay. These are old school adapters to go from the early. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. Um, So we'll just yep. keep them so we don't have to get yep. one. Gotcha. They're not, really, they're not really worth it. No. And there might be multiple Lion or uh, Edelbrock's common. So there's another Allstate floating around. Oh, a third one, that's yeah. right. I didn't remember you said there were pictures. I know there's two pairs of fixed and marine heads. So we'll leave a gap. Speedway was a single, is, right? What? Speedway was a single? Yeah, you could put it near the Allstates. It's like the same. If you leave a gap next leave to a gap the sticks, between it, there's another. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> it's custom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's custom. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, you can slide down and do it again from the fly ends. Well, there's another thick stick. Oh, yeah. you left the space here? Yeah. yeah. Offenhauser is probably. I don't see any hooks on it. Is there, already, is there two sets of that wire? No. Particular? Just put them wherever. I think there's three of those, too. I think there's a single. Is there any, any other any wires? Right there. He's got, I just set one there. I think there's three total, if I remember. Probably a couple sets of edges. Who brought these paper boots? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was like, how to set it up on my tee. Yeah. Right? When I first got the parts. Yep. Oh man, I got a real set of wobblers. Right, I got a real set of uh, early edel brush. So Ooh, SAEs to go with the intake. Yep. yep. Evans, there should be three of them, I think. Two so here's Edmonds. Edmonds are out. Edmonds, there's some Edmonds out. Right there, so you put them next to them. Oh, there's Edmonds right here. Too. Oh, we'll good. slide them down. No, I'll just, just put them up top there. Should I put them here? Oh, there's a pair of Thixtons that need to go there. Yeah. Move this single speedway, and we'll move those up there. Well, we had another Allstate. That's what we're talking about. God damn it. That's what we're talking about. But somebody with a magnifying glass is going to sit there and they're going to say, hey, there's three of those heads. This is like a what's his face's booth at freaking Carlisle and Hershey all the time. Wrong. Yeah. All right. So after about a day and a half of unloading and sorting, and we very quickly sorted. Um, you'll see in a few minutes uh, all the pallets of what we're going to call common stuff, which is not really that common. It's just the stuff that there was, you know. 30, 40 Ford gauge panels and you know all that kind of stuff, glove box lids and stuff. We just left it kind of on the pallets because it's gonna take ages to go through. So we'll touch on that a little bit, but this is some of the highlights of what we pulled out. Um, we'll start with some of these carts and work our way around and it's gonna be fun. So we got this hood, the, the, the gentleman that we bought the first stash of stuff from um, kind of made us take it. He said he drove to like North Dakota or something for it. This hood, I guess is 49. Uh, olds, they had these on the, in the, at the dealership on the car so you could see the engine through it. Unfortunately, it was cracked when he got it apparently, um, but he basically said it was gonna get thrown out if we didn't take it. So we took it and even if we could pass it on to an Olds guy for cheap, um, we were able to save it. It was a giant pain in the ass to move this thing without breaking it further. Surprisingly survived the box truck yeah, drive. Yeah, it did. It, it was, it was uh, very surprising. So that's that. Um, some NOS 49 Olds. Um, front fenders, which is pretty cool. They were up in the attic, I dug them out. I don't think we got shots of that, but they were a giant pain in the butt to get out because they were, the, the crawl space was just big enough to fit the fenders, so it was, it was fun. Um, this is our, every one of these estates, we get like a pallet of ephemera and books and magazines, and stuff like that. This one's no different. Second estate we went to, there was, all, there was a big collection of Rodgers journals. Um, there was stuff from old gas stations, all kinds of stuff. Um, we've been doing pretty well with uh, offering some of the ephemera and books and magazines. I think people are starting to realize that this, a lot of this stuff, information isn't out there on the internet, you know, and so we're getting people that are buying some of these neat old books. I mean, there's lots of forums and stuff, but these books are like really good because they have information all in one place and, you know, the books are cheap, you know, five bucks or whatever, ten bucks, you can get a ton of information. So we've been repurposing all this stuff and getting it back on our site. We have... I think over there, there's five pallets. Five pallets of more from other recent estates. So it is a slow process. Uh, Mike gets these listed, a, you know, 10 at a time or something, and then they sell really quickly, and 
and then list again. So that's that. Uh, 44 Fender, I believe, or 39, don't recall. Um, got a 40 Ford block. This, I believe, was in the basement of the second place. Um, it's just already been taken apart. It needs to be sent away and get magnifluxed and pressure tested. So somebody did all the hard work and took it all apart for us. So that one will be easy to do. There's some 40 Ford four-door doors. These doors, you can trim the top edge and change to make them fit coupes. They're basically rust-free. So uh, that's why the first gentleman we bought from saved them. So we will make pairs of these and then offer them up for somebody that's fixing up a, a 40 coupe. Um, rears, torque tubes, that's just common stuff. This is a lot of mechanical. Second estate, he had some um, 52, three, four, fives. He did some pickups in those. So we have some grills, some 44 trim. There's headers down in here, 44 inner fenders. All kinds of neat stuff. That's just kind of like our bread and butter stuff. You know, we, we sell all the time. Some old clothing stuff, Goodyear jacket, old mechanics jacket from a dealership, Sinclair hat, just some neat stuff that was laying around. This pallet is just everything you can think of. This is kind of neat. This is, I think, 4041 sedan delivery. Um, I think it was. No, I think it was just pickup because it's fun. Oh, I'm sorry, mixing up the two estates. Pickup. This is 4041 pickup rear bumper with the, the special um, bumper irons, which is cool. So that's not something we need. We'll probably off, uh, pass that along. Hubcaps, all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what the hell's on this pallet, but there's lots of neat stuff on here we, to be found yes. at some point. Um, here we have all kinds of just mechanical rear wishbones, steering boxes. There is a drop uh, aftermarket, old aftermarket drop axle there. So we'll sell that. Um, just. Again, stuff. Bread and butter stuff, as we call it. This is the stuff that we just sell every day of the week that you need to build cars. Uh, but yeah, vintage chassis works. There's the box for that axle. Um, same thing, steering boxes, stuff. This is mostly oil pans. <laughs> yeah, oil pans. Radiators, um, 44. There's just, again, this is like what we were dealing with with a lot of these pallets you'll see in a minute. The boxes are just all kinds of stuff thrown together from. Uh, a 32 water pump, a single one, to a mercury carburetor, to who knows what. So we just, Mike has to, all of us have to go through this, but Mike's got the fun of really yes. going through it all. This is one of my favorite advertising finds that I'm keeping. This is the original Stromberg cabinet in fantastic condition. Still has some parts in it. These things were stackable, so I've seen where people have them in, you know, like big stacks when they were kind of in these two drawer stacks. He only had one two drawer uh, set up, but it's really nice. The bottom cabinet is actually just filled with really nice hardware, so we're gonna take that and dump it out at the shop and then sell the cabinet just as advertising for somebody. But all the nuts and bolts and washers are what I was actually <laughs> after in that. Um, so we're getting into majority, the next two tables are keeper for Matt. I th well, no, yeah, some of this stuff isn't always keeper. Neat old rug. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the upstairs next to the free tee so you can wipe your feet before you get in. We saw that at a, a hot, uh, one of the hot rod shops at Stoker's when we visited one gentleman's collection. He had them in between each car with oriental rugs. We're like, that's kind of a nice idea. So anyways, that's kind of neat. Old drop axle. This stuff I don't know if I'm gonna keep or sell. That's why I hesitate when Mike said that. I'm probably gonna sell the wagon and the train. Just neat old collectible stuff. I got so much crap. I have already decided to move that. <laughs> we stopped to pick this up as a last, we didn't film it. This is a 33 radiator, an original one. It is in really nice shape. We picked up from a gentleman in Ohio. I had been looking at it on the ham, just hadn't had time to go grab it. That is here. So that'll go on the 33 Arden car. Um, this is this first table, second table is mostly keeper stuff for me. Um, I skimmed all kinds of random junk here. So some of this stuff's gonna be hard to go through. Um, I pulled a couple speedometers. These 160 Stuart Warners are always good. 6,000 RPM. There's a little bit of wings gauges. I have I have a handful of them floating around in my case already. So to put sets together, I uh, skim them. Uh, but there's a lot of neat stuff like that I saw laying around. Like this is an old chrome radiator cap, and this is the same cap that's on the Shoal Coupe. It has a little offset neck, and they put a later. Um, Ford radiator cap on it. So we'll take the old crusty one off and put an old chrome one. So the theme of these two tables is chrome. Old, old chrome. So I pretty much skimmed a lot of the old chrome. Plug wires, there's a Lucas distributor there with an interesting distributor cap that I haven't really seen before on the Lucases. So pretty cool. 
Um, so this, um, we have one of these on the Mercury and I kind of like it, so I'm gonna put this aside and save it for something that's nice because you can adjust the timing and dial it in, get the car running real good with that, so that's pretty cool. Um, chrome timing covers, there's multiples of those, little jet, jet plate here, organize your jets, which is pretty nice, full of jets. Um, Tower O Chrome Strombergs and a couple of Hollies mixed in. Um, again, I there's don't a really... box of plain Strombergs somewhere. Yeah, there's somewhere. We'll get to them in a minute. Um, this box is a bunch of Chrome stuff. We just have it thrown on top. Just more like random Chrome engine parts. Um, it's pretty neat. This is really cool. I didn't take it out yet. I think I'm gonna just put it on the shelf because I don't know if it really has a lot of value, but it's neat. It's an original Edmonds intake manifold box. So, I mean, that's, this is kind of incredible that to have this box that would have had an intake in it. And you can see that it has the original sticker still on it from Edmunds. So pretty wild stuff. This will just be neat to put on the shelf on display. Again, I don't even know if it has any value, but it's cool to put, um, put on a, a, a shelf. Uh, I have a couple of these, but um, with us having multiple buildings. This will be kind of cool to hang up in one of the other buildings. It's in fantastic condition, uh, but it's a FOMOCO Ford parts sign. Um, I don't even remember what's in all these boxes. Oh, Kong. yeah, this is cool. So there's a Kong distributor, and this is, and there's some Mallory stuff in here, which we can pull out the cell. But they're, uh, most importantly, and there's a needle coil. These are like NOS Kong distributor parts. They're basically like the caps, the Kong distributors they use um, some other manufacturers, uh, replacement parts for lack of a better term, so distributor cap, rotor, some of that stuff uh, was just whatever he used on that batch of distributors. So this is all those. All right, we got this box swapped around here. So there's a Kong in pieces. You can see it's like a multi-piece distributor cap here. So there's one portion of it. You see this one's a little damaged, still usable, but so that I think within all of this madness here, there is a Kong distributor, so pretty cool. That's like a coveted piece for people that are looking for old ignition stuff, because um, that was you know, one of the most desirable ones back in the day. Uh, got, I, there's a lot, when we get around, there's a lot of advertising, but I only kept a handful of things, so this was pretty cool, I thought. Spring lubricating compound. <laughs> so special can, shock absorber fluid. So some of these old Ford cans, I've been kind of keeping and put on a shelf. It's neat to, collect those. This is the coolest one. Yeah, that's cool. Lock lubricant. I don't know if I've seen one of those. Really neat. A um, bunch of frog mouth scoops. This is really cool. Um, the first gentleman also, not only was he into early Fords, but he was into Oldsmobiles. So this, he said, was off an old race engine. Has like a Mallory, um, has a Mallory part on it here. I'm going to guess it has probably a dual point conversion kit because Mallory sold those dual point conversions, but it's chromed. It's freaking chromed. So stock distributor that was chromed, spins over nice. So I'll probably put this aside because we have a couple extra Olds engines. So this would be neat to run in something. This old store one or chrome fuel pump. This is super cool. Wild old photos in the magazines and stuff. You would see one or two of these on the firewall that were chromed out. So it's kind of neat to, to have one of those. Most of them are six volt, but I thought I'd put it aside. Maybe we could figure out a way to drop the voltage down and still run it. This really neat gauge. This is like an old Auburn style gauge, but I don't know what it's out of, but with the tan face, it's really unique. This can go in our Stromberg box. Do these. Oh yeah, so we got, these were come off the wall the first place. He said he pulled these off an old gas station, I believe in Minneapolis when he was, you know, many years ago. But the AC spark plug signs, one's better than the other. The old tin tackers, so I would guess these are 20s or 30s. This one's my favorite out of the two styles. With the spark plug and the, you know, the uh, lines coming off of it just looks really neat. So those two are there. This is really cool. This is, has basically zero value, but I just thought it was cool. So this is an old aluminum flywheel for a flathead, but they went as far as drilling the ring gear all the way around the white knit. And it looks like they milled the face down too. If yeah. You flip it over, they took. They, as light as can be. It is really light, but really not something you'd run on a streetcar. You know, it's just ridiculous. It might have been in a boat even. Um, so just a neat piece hanging on the wall just because it's, you know, part of history with all the lightning. You just did whatever you could do to get the thing uh, to go faster and accelerate faster. So that's cool. There's another one somewhere we could show you. These are cool old V8 air cleaners. And it's nice to find some matches. So I found those two pairs of matches 
Um, this is, I'm really psyched on this. So this is a Ford parts, like a rebuilt parts uh, advertisement. So this would be, these stickers are always on the old fuel pumps, distributors, carburetors, all that stuff that was rebuilt, I guess, by Ford. Um, so these are really, really neat to see a sign. Again, I've never seen one of these before, but old pressed tin sign. Um, this is early. Um, I haven't, I wasn't even aware of what this was, but motor oil and grease and a gasoline. Two different ones. These oh, were, I didn't realize they were different. Yeah, and there was a third one, and he had grabbed it. So unfortunately, I don't know what that one was. I but think these, it was motor oil and grease. Yeah. So there's we got one of each of these, which is really cool. Um, this is like again like 20 stuff, but they're in fantastic condition. You can see that they're not. They're the old sign company is on them. It's not like they're the folded over reproductions from India or China. So these are cool. Again, same thing. He found them somewhere in his collection collecting over a million years and put them on the wall. So really psyched to have those getting kept. This is neat. It's an old Gotha um, timing wheel here, but it's in the, or no, I'm sorry. That's a Gotha timing wheel. This is a cutout in the original Gotha book that went to John Witt. We have a bunch of stuff from John Witt, which we'll talk about in a bit that the gentleman had collected, but it's a original cutout from Gotha. So kind of neat. Just again, the box is cool. I don't know what I'm doing that. We may sell that. Um, chrome. Yeah. You'll see a theme here. I kind of kept all the old chrome stuff because some of my cars I want to swap stuff on. So like for instance, neat old chrome distic tube. It's just cool to put this stuff on the car. So like the T, I have a little chrome sword handle on there, but now we got a dipstick tube. So fun to swap that around. This is really good. Scintilla right angle drive with a vertex mag on it for a flathead Ford and the buttons there. Really, really nice piece. So this is something I'll get redone and we can put on a car or an engine for someday. So that's nice to hold on to. Um, Beehive oil filter. I have one or two of these, so we may sell this one, but I got to check and see what I have uh, first. Uh, more chrome, old, old olds pulleys and stuff. Um, he had a bunch of club plaques. Oh yeah, there's some, these are just some old flathead camshafts. I don't remember, there's a Winfield, might be a Isky in there. Um, Bunch of club plaques he had. Um, this is how this stuff goes. He kind of handed us the club plaques. He was like, oh, you'll be really happy. There's a bunch of neat old club plaques. 99.9% .9 of them are literally just repros that you can go to swap meet and just get. I mean, some of these, for instance, still have the sand on them from when they were made. So they're, they're cool, but you can literally get these everywhere. These are just, I mean, we'll do the same thing, sell them for 10 bucks or five bucks or whatever to swap meet. But there is a few that are old ones. So this one, you could tell by the foundry on the back, if you're ever looking at these, like these foundries were the ones that were selling the plaques. You could get them right out of the hot rod magazine, give them your design and it would cast you plaques. So a couple of these are older ones. I don't know about the Speed Gems ones. They might even be repros, but I need to look into it. A couple of these say that on it, but they're the only ones that have that. So I need to educate myself on those. This is just stuff, just stuff. I don't even know. I think this is actually the cell. I don't know how I made it on this pile here. Um, these are cool, very unusual. Edmunds Olds, Edmunds Custom Olds valve covers. So um, the gentleman that had all this stuff had actually been selling for a while. I've been doing swap meets and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it wasn't like he was hoarding and not selling anything. He just kept the good stuff. But this is a good example. One of the last swap meets he did, he took some Olds intakes and speed equipment and had these valve covers sitting on the table and they weren't perfect enough, he said. He said a bunch of people picked them up, and were like, eh, they're, they're not nice enough, and put them down, and nobody bought them. And he was negotiable. So it just goes to show, this stuff went to swap meets, and nobody bought this stuff. And they're like, Edmunds Custom Olds valve covers, very rare, so. Cool to have those. This is a set of 14 inch Hollywood um, moon discs, so to speak. Those will get sold. I don't know why they got on that table there. Um, now we're into just, Good stuff, but there's a lot of a it. lot of it. So we just started. This is all just Stuart Warner gauges in the boxes, and I just skimmed a few things I needed. But there's a ton of like good temperature gauges and green lines and um, big logo, small logo, the block letters. There's just tons of gauges in here. So there's some coils. So what we do with a lot of stuff, Mike, we either put gauge sets together in panels, or we'll offer up like a set on the table or whatever. Um, so that stuff will be coming up for sale. And some of it is, you know, actually old stuff. Some of it's like, this is a little bit newer of one, but ton of gauges there. 
This is just miscellaneous we pulled out that was interesting. Old rear view mirror clock, um, Oldsmobile, um, vanity mirror, just all kinds of stuff, I don't even know. This is all chrome air cleaners. So there's just like every box is packed with old air cleaners. They're all mixed together, so we need to go through these and make pairs and sets. We will be selling these. I only literally skimmed a couple pairs for myself. This one was super cool. I'd love to find a match to it. It's got these uh, checkered flag on it, which is really cool, but we only found one, and I don't think they're in any of the boxes, so I'd love to find another one. This is a NOS chrome plated air cleaner for Mercury Lincoln. Install it. Calmant air cleaner. You will feel and hear the surge of power you have been looking for. Try it. So just a neat, neat old air cleaner in here. And we have some of those that are used, but there's only one that's NOS. But again, kind of a neat shelf item. We'll be selling a lot of this stuff out. Uh -huh. Oh, this is just ridiculousness. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> so this is just all different fuel blocks. I'm gonna go through and probably skim a few like this Ilco is really neat. I don't think I have one of these, so I'll probably pull. I'm not gonna pull a lot, believe it or not. I have a handful, but I've, I'm have i not as much of a hoarder of fuel blocks as I am other things, so, um, and I have a bunch of these. So I'll probably pull one or two here or there. Um, I think there's another box. No, that's just carburizers and stuff floating around. Offset generator brackets, all different types. So, you can see these boxes are pretty ridiculous. So this is all kind of like the better stuff that we, um, if you follow our Instagram, Mike usually sells this stuff on Instagram first, the quote unquote good stuff. He will list that first on Instagram. So look, if you're not following our Instagram sales page, Iron Trap Finds, you can find that stuff there. And this is where everybody bitches and I'm doing a sales pitch. Yes, we have a business. Uh, Mallory Olds and APA Distributors. This is a Nash Twin distributor cap for dual, dual plug. Uh, good thing for uh, hot rod heads, dual plugs. Chrome air cleaner, Offenhauser scoop. Again, you can see what's here, yes you can. These are reproduction, I had these on the same ones on the T, real ones, but you can't even really tell the difference once they're mounted. So Scott's, these are early Corvette, Bottinger, um, or Botcher. Uh, chrome air cleaners for the three carb intake on a vet for straight six. A smattering of, of uh, 40 Ford wheels, store one or tax, just stuff. The smallest Mickey Thompson rods we have ever seen. There was only three of them. Don't really know what they were for, but might be cool for a column drop. A little short aluminum rods we just grabbed and they were neat. A little flywheels, Olds changeover with an early Ford adapter for caddy or Olds. In this case, it's bolted to an Olds. Set up, but that'll allow you to bolt that um, on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, GM, I think, banjo steering wheel. These cool mirrors that are, let's see there, Viewmasters. The backs Just, of them are real Yeah, good. super cool NOS in the box. So those are really, really neat. On the right 50s or 60s car, they would be really cool. We didn't find a cap for this, but this is. I have a spare cap and rotor I, for it. I think it might be. I'm not sure actually what it's for. Could be Pontiac, could be Olds, I'm not sure, but it's a W and H uh, dual, duo point. So it's like a dual coil uh, setup if I remember correctly, but it looks like freaking basically brand new inside. So we'll try and put together a complete distributor, find out the application and then offer it up. This is, there's some stuff like this is just neat. I almost don't want to use it, but this is a Hudai direct action shock conver absorber conversion kit. So this is a full kit. You could buy off the shelf to put tube shocks on your early Ford, but it's like in the box, all the brackets, brand new. Do you use it? Do you display it? It's kind of hard to do, but probably be selling that off. Um, some chrome spark plug tubes for V860. Um, this dash, 40 Ford-ish dash. Um, so there's some stuff we're getting into a little bit more. We'll show you a little bit that is um, uh, this John Witt person that, um, that the gentleman had bought from his estate. He was doing the same thing that we're doing. He was buying from guys that were getting out of it or passed away or whatever. So he bought from an old hydroplane racer from, that was racing in I think the 40s and 50s and 60s um, real heavily. Uh, he bought stuff from his estate and he was racing V860s and flathead, 85 horse flatheads. So there's a bunch of stuff from that. So this is really neat. These are these Keller 
um, early Keller gauges, and I believe from my quick research, you can see his name was actually stamped in the face. So Keller Seattle, I believe, made high-end, or they were like some of the best quality um, speedboat uh, gauge, gauges that you could call and order, you know, or send away and order like custom-made your gauges. And the stuff I had read online is that he would stamp your name in the face or put something on the inside of it. So these are two different speedometer gauges um, that are for boat. So, uh, but they're really cool, curved glass. They got the hammer tone paint on them. Um, this was just a neat find. So somebody doing an old speedboat restoration or hydroplane would probably enjoy these. Um, we found his old racing goggles that were in there. Again, in with his stuff that are just neat. Could be used for automotive if you've replaced the lenses there. They're all plastic lenses or yellow. This is cool. So this is a homemade aluminum flywheel. They took the center of a you know, stock flywheel and they took the ring gear, cut it all apart, and then they took this piece of aluminum and riveted it all together. Pretty wild stuff. Made their own aluminum flywheel. Obviously there was, I don't think there was a clutch surface on this, so um, this is race only, obviously. So, um, but again, neat little wall hanger. I don't know, we'll probably sell this one, but it's just cool. All right, so we'll show some of the advertising. We, for some odd reason, got a lot of advertising. We are not like sign guys and go crazy hunting signs. We do come across them in our, in our humble buying, but um, we did get a bunch this time, which is kind of neat. So um, first gentleman collected old stuff, as we mentioned. This is a plastic light up, super rocket sign. Very fragile, very cool. That's one that we probably will have to offer is pick up only potentially. It's so fragile, I would hate to even ship it. So we might- That'll be a tough one. Yeah, we either pick up only or we may take, that might be something we take to Carlisle in the spring and somebody might be interested in. Old paint, uh, Benjamin Moore paint sign. Not real old, but still neat, plastic. The Phillips 66 letters are old aluminum letters that were, uh, would have been on the top, kind of leading edge of, a, of an overhang or something on a Phillips 66 station. Really cool, only bummer is the guy's father had started to blast like one or two letter, or you know, two letters, one number, and a part of one number. Um, I wish he would have just left the old paint. May try and just dust some red paint on it to make it look the same and just put them up. But I'm going to hold on to them. Probably, I might try and put them up over my office uh, upstairs. It would be really cool. Um, this Buick sign, I don't know if it's real old, but it's just neat. These, uh, this is a factory GM scuff pads that you would put on the edge of your door panel so when you're kind of kicking the door open. Uh, but it's neat that it's in the package and that the advertising on it is just like, the logo is really cool. Uh, these are just like uh, cones or pylons for, you would put around the winner of a, of a race or a car show, just whatever. A uh, little clock that's nothing special. Um, these are all like old banners. We opened one or two you saw earlier in the video um, that are like 30s, a lot of them are 30s and 40s olds banners. Quite fragile, so we don't want to open them up and too many times. So we took one or two out, we'll, we'll be opening these up, taking photos properly, and then we'll list them for sale. If you're interested uh, in some of those old banners, just send us an email and we can pull them out or send you an email when we get them out. But we didn't want to pull them all out just because they're so fragile. This is again some old advertising. This is cool. Delcotron generators, a bunch of them. Um, old cushion toppers. So there's a bunch of neat just accessory advertising stuff that's in there. Uh, you can see we got uh, some cabinets. The Pleasure Riser is a kind of funny one. Um, but the Ford uh, Stroboscope, the original distributor mean, a machine, I think it's roughly like 1940 era. So that's super cool. We have a box with like all the adapters with it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not yet. I'm having a little bit of a crisis on that <laughs> one because I feel like we could probably put it to use. But then again, I don't know if we'll really use it enough to justify the floor space. So that is a constant battle. I don't know yet. Uh, 35.6, like root lieb, I believe, hood sides, um, Ford hood sides that have no louvers in them, uh, randomly found them. I don't know if I've ever bought this many pedal cars at an estate before, but we bought like two project pedal cars and these two that, this one I think is an old restoration. It looks like it's like a 20s pedal car maybe. We have some books to kind of, uh, we got from the estate that we can educate and identify them. There's this one here that's like an original paint 
station wagon, I was it Murray? Murray, yeah, that one, this one, and this one are both Murrays. Yeah, they're super cool. Even though my last name is Murray, I don't know if I'm gonna keep them because- <laughs> Instant pedal car collector. I have so much junk, and it, this is gonna be a slippery slope. I'll start with one original paint pedal car, and the next thing you know, I'm going to auctions and it's buying- like your 32 grills. Ugh. So I'm gonna probably sell this stuff just because I don't, they're neat to look at, but I don't see myself collecting them currently. And you, you know, can't drive them, so. Can't drive them. I mean, they take up a lot of space. I'd rather have like six or eight cool flathead intakes in the same spot. I don't know, they don't do much for me. Uh, all, a set of skirts, um, they were marked as Chevy, but they may also work on like 36 Ford or something like that. This is like advertising land. Mike was setting all this up. This is just a portion of it. Um, everything from needle cans, to testers, to uh, radiator cap and gas cap thing. Um, there's a bunch of really neat GM. So like for instance, this permanent antifreeze, unusual one, bunch of GM. You see a lot of Ford cans, but I don't see GM stuff quite as much. So those are pretty neat. Always will be a touch up thing. We found this, this is off an old, off old gas pump, super cool. Um, oh my God. And there's more cans under the table. Yeah, there's like common cans and stuff under the table. This rocker can's pretty cool, that's early. Um, Kendall can. This I'm probably gonna keep, again, Ford stuff, so I'm trying to reel myself in and not keep every piece of neat advertising in the planet. So Ford stuff, I've tried to kind of narrow myself down a little bit. So I'll probably hold on to that. Um, the rest of this stuff's pretty much gonna end up going uh, for the most part. This we might try and put back together. The, the, the second gentleman, he said his father built this when he was a kid, but it's an old like show rod. It's got like a phone in it and chrome brakes and everything. It's super cool. So I might try and like haphazardly put it back together and then put it on the shelf just because it's neat. It doesn't really have any value, but it would just be neat on a shelf. Um, again, more just stuff. I wow. don't know. There's so much, it's like stacked two, yes. three deep. Yeah, the, That's the cool. safety signal stat thing. And you know, this is from World War II era with the, with the shades on it so that you couldn't see the lights from overhead from a plane. So that's pretty neat. It's got a fuse in it and little buttons that you can push to make it work. So that's pretty cool. It might even still work. We don't know. Um, yeah, we got all that stuff. We'll, Go to the we'll, skip, we'll skip over this skip junk over on the this floor. Here. Get you that at the end. So. This is my living hell. Yeah, this is gonna be a major, major, major project for Mike. Um, and like you guys can see, we have plenty of other estates that we have the same problem. Like it's slow going when you get to a lot of this stuff where we have to kind of identify it. And uh, there's multiples and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of 44 stuff in here, grills and splash pans and, and garnish molding and all kinds of stuff that's fixed in here. Um, there's many pallets of that. There's many pallets. That's what all these boxes are all just stacked full with that kind of stuff. And the majority of them are full, full. They're not yeah. like partials. Yeah, a lot of them are like, you know, so there's like engine pans, all kinds of stuff. So we got to go through and on, unfortunately it's all kind of organized, but also haphazard. So there might be engine pans in this box and throughout this pallet, there's seven other boxes with engine pans and trim pieces. So we got to get them all kind of together and just got to go through pallet by pallet get it organized. This is the most difficult part of what we do is how labor intensive and time intensive it is to take all this stuff apart and go through it, identify it, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is this cool, super cool V860 that we kind of talked about in the original video. Uh, for a quick background on it, basically it was apparently this John Witt um, racer, hydroplane racer had this in a boat, uh, raced on a lake of Minnesota, <coughs> boat broke in half or came apart part of the boat and this engine went to the bottom of the 100 foot lake and then scuba divers basically pulled it back up. John Witt then allegedly put in a 55 gallon drum filled with motor oil and it sat there for like basically, what do we understand, the rest of his life. Soaking, the gentleman we bought all this stuff from, he pulled it out of the drum uh, or whatever and then he bought it and has, it, has had it for all these years. You could see the custom oil pan with the kickouts on it. Very nicely welded too. Yeah, so this has got Eddie Myers heads and Ed an early Edelbrock uh, intake on it. Just to, well, you can see the bitchin' pipes that came out of it with the water passages on it. So really, really cool piece. Uh, we're probably gonna try and just see if we can get it to turn over. Typical deal, if we can get it to turn over, 
or inspect it a little bit and it seems good, get it to turn over. Maybe we'll get it to run. We might just get it to turn over and, and offer it up to somebody. Um, but it would be a very killer little hopped up engine, whether it goes back in a boat or it's, you know, for a little hot rod. So that's kind of exciting just because it's got a quite of uh, folklore to it. Flathead blocks and engines, we seem to get these every estate. We're kind of talked into getting these. And drowning in engines. And drowning in flatheads. We got a bunch of these floating around. This is just one that's here, I'll show you guys. So again, from the John Wick collection, he had gotten a bunch of boat manifolds. So this is flathead boat, D-bold out of Linwood, California. There's a pair of these and a pair of another one, other ones, maybe three pairs, I don't remember. I think but it's two pairs. Two pairs, so there's a bunch of that stuff, boat, flathead boat stuff, which I've been seeing of the rounds of a couple of guys with hot rod flathead boats running them on Instagram and stuff. So there might be a comeback of that stuff, which would be kind of neat to see. I think you need to build one. Ugh, no. <laughs> um, set of uh, these Chrysler wire wheels that are the large body Chrysler. So it's actually a Ford five by five and a half bolt pattern, which is really neat. These were really popular for a while. The interesting part is that they have the center caps with them, which are usually missing and they're in very good shape. So good for a survivor car or to strip and have them re-chromed. Um, so those will be good to sell. Most of this stuff's getting sold. This is an old gas pump that we found at the second estate that was like in partial, was being restored and was just sitting on the table. So you can see here, this is the paperwork. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like there. So a little bit different, but it has a long white hose that goes up top. Uh, kind of an early piece, pretty cool. So pretty much 99% of the parts are here for it and are polished and painted and all that stuff. There's a reproduction hose over there. So we just need to go through, we're going to probably kind of organize everything and lightly assemble it and then offer it up for sale to somebody. I, I have one gas pump in my collection that it, it has sentimental value. I don't need to have like 17 gas pumps right now at least. It's another slip, slippery, slippery slope. slope it is. So, but I think this one we're going to offer for sale. Key cutter, another piece of advertising that we actually missed oh, I in didn't here. Miss that. Old spark plug cleaner. I'll, dr I'll grab this one out. But this is pretty cool. Edison spark plug cleaning service. It's a little fragile, but still pretty cool. So again, that's stuff that will be for sale. We missed it. There's a trans GM trans mixed in there. And this is just more stuff. We got a couple so sets. Of, lamp, the, oh yeah. There was a couple sets under the advertising table, but we got three or four different sets of these uh, like road flares, quote unquote. These are electric and we got another set that are kerosene or oil. Yep. They're pretty, pretty rad. Pretty neat stuff. Good, good for shop. These are pretty cool. So the second place we went, the gentleman said that his father used to street race and drag race a Tri-5 Chevy back in the day and these wheels were off of one of his tri fives but they're early hoosiers um nine by 15 and you can see, see the tread on the side super cool cheater slicks uh, so these are really cool they wear they weigh like a bajillion Dude, pounds so heavy so heavy but they are i think they're 475 um bolt pattern for for gm um, or chevy so those i don't know we'll probably just sell them as cool as they are Again, they take up a lot of space, so I probably won't keep them. Some Columbia stuff that's mixing around. We seem to be getting a lot of that, so we really need to get ourselves educated on putting together Columbias or something, because we have so much we can build. Yeah, we got a few. We can build a bunch of them. Um, old lever shocks, these are from some bigger cars. We just picked them up and they're good to sell. Restoration guys like them. And just stuff, 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 stuff. Should we talk about the stuff on the floor? Yeah, the elephant in the room is the <laughs> main reason Main reason that we bought all this, that we were lured in. Yes. Just a helpless addict. Just a, that, dangling the carrot, just yeah, right there. That, 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 you know, I was almost a recovering addict there for a minute this winter. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I relapsed bad. So, this is the original stuff I got offered was all the intakes, the heads, um, and some of the stuff we showed on the table that was gauges and fuel blocks. This is a lifetime collection by the gentleman. We bought us from, he was in his 80s. I think he mentioned to me he started collecting when he was like 14 or 16 or something like that. He got into this stuff. A lot of this stuff is dated when he found it. And a lot of them are like 70s and 80s. He was buying some of this, these intakes and heads. Obviously, you know, a lot of it he's probably not paying very much money for because he was, you know, buying it back then. Some of it he remarked he did step up for. It's the same as all of us. He, he was getting deals, but he also stepped up for the good stuff. So. 
We kind of laid all this out by manufacturer, and we'll just go through and I'll show you some of my favorites. So, um, Edelbrock High Rise, which is kind of like a Hawaiian high rise, that's super cool. That'll be for sale. I have one of them. Edelbrock Slingshot. This one's a little nicer than one I have, so I'll probably trade it out for the one I have. Um, some common M uh, Edelbrocks. This is really cool. I've always wanted one. It's an Evans Low. This is a pretty sought after 4 2 intake. Uh, I've always wanted one and never was able to find one um, for an appropriate deal. So now I have one. That so one's getting kept. Some Evans. These are all the Fenton style and, and uh, incentive intakes. If you guys haven't watched the podcast or listened to the podcast or watched the video with our friend Pete, who is a, a major flathead speed equipment nerd, he educated us on all these different things. You can watch that and learn the history on that. But that's pretty much most every option or a lot of the options there. More Fens. This is pretty rare. I just got one of these. Mike found it at Hershey for me, I think. Oh, yeah. Or Carlisle. Or Carlisle. Fenton 4.2. That's a pretty unusual one. Fenton 2.2s two are like everywhere. All right. So now we're into the Eddie Myers stuff, which is really cool. He had a bunch of the Eddie Myers intakes. This is one of the um, water heated earlier intakes. Really cool. I have one, but it's a little more rough than that. So I may trade it out or I may keep it. This is Edelbrock. I'm uh, sorry. Eddie Myers. Um, this is probably the most popular Eddie Myers that you see. They reproduce them or reproduce them currently. Um, this is an old one. Pretty cool, so I'll probably hold on to that. Uh, Eddie Myers Low, I think I have one of these. Eddie Myers V860. I'll probably get rid of that because I'm not trying to not collect V860 stuff. That goes with that'll match the boat engine. Yes, yes. Um, bunch of Hawaiian stuff, so 4-2, 3-2, 2-2. The high rise, the famous you know Hawaiian high rise. This one has a little boo-boo. So we either may fix that or offer it up for a little cheaper. Probably gonna fix it, that way it can just be used or we may keep that and trade it out for one I have because we have the ability to fix that. Um, I'm gonna do both these rows at the same time. Yeah, Bounce so this is uh, roof intakes. These this are one. really cool. This one, both of these are really cool. This one is awesome. Um, I recently got a set of heads that I believe are NOS um, of roof heads that are really, really cool. So I was kind of looking for some intakes. One popped up on Instagram not that long ago that was really affordable and I missed out on it, was pretty bummed. So now we have two different versions of it, which is really cool. This is the one that has the price on the bottom. Oh yeah, <laughs> you guys will like this. So again, $100, who knows when he bought the darn thing, but you know, floating around. This is a very rare intake, but this is, it's a reproduction, but it's a very rare intake, whether it's re production or an original one, uh, DGS. It's a Denver, Colorado speed equipment co company. I don't know any history on them. I've seen, I think last year at Hershey, I saw a guy selling one of the intakes and it was fairly pricey, um, but I didn't know anything about it. And then after talking to the gentleman we bought all this stuff from, apparently like there was like almost no, re there was like maybe a small run done. Um, and. There's as few of these as there is the real deal. So even though it's reproduction, it's still really cool. It's like some of the Eddie Meyer stuff that was done by Orozco uh, many years ago. That stuff has become scarce itself because it was done only a handful of batches. So now the stuff's better than the originals because it's not as used, but it's still quite unusual. Um, let's see, fixed in stuff here. We got a high fixed in PM7 high rise. Uh, we have the low rise fixed in. This is the pre-war fixed in. It's a little different, you can see how the, the runners are here. I believe that's pre-war low rise as well. Yes, it is also. Um, but you can see that the shape of it is much different, especially back here, you can really tell with the webbing. See the stamp with the serial number there in it or whatever. Um, I think I have, again, I have one of those that we got from our friend Ed that we're doing a bunch of uh, consignment for. We did a video on that when we went to visit him. Um, one of my first times visiting him, I bought a bunch of stuff and I've got one of them. Mine has a little damage, so I'll probably trade it out, offer mine up for sale, so don't. Be too mad that like I'm gonna keep all this stuff. I am selling a lot of it, just trading out for better. Tattersfield, probably sell that. I have one of them already. That's a Tattersfield like mid or low rise. I don't know what the term would be. Uh, and that Tattersfield polished, um, I think it's Tattersfield Baron, 4-2, very unusual. I'll probably hold on to that because I've never had a chance to buy one. So that's cool. Tornado, which is unusual, which is basically a fixed in low rise uh, early. It's the same casting. Um, this one is Pete Anderson Automotive, right? Oh, he disappeared. Okay. I believe that's Anderson Automotive. Anderson yeah. Automotive. Um, our buddy Pete, who's here, was here helping us because he's 
kind of it's right here. Yeah, he was educating us. He has one of these, but this is a two-piece intake. You could swap these pieces out and put a 2-2, two, 3-2, two, uh, two, four. Um, the gentleman owned all this stuff, had a tag on it, said uh, manufacturer not known. Pete has one of these and educated us that little AA is Anderson Automotive. There's so one on the top up there pretty cool. Uh, now I have a, 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 to hunt down more of these tops. What for, top does he have on his? I think he has a four, a two, a, a four barrel uh, top and I think he has a two, two oh, top. Okay. Um, Almquest, pretty common, Cyclone. Some of these are unusual, 3-2 Cyclone, Smith-Jones, um, bunch of Grand Corps stuff, which is cool. That 4-2 Grand Corps is supposedly like there's single digits of them ever made. There was a gentleman I got this from is telling me folklore that um, they made them for like the Indy cars for like a year or something like that that had flatheads in them. And uh, so they only produced like a small batch of them. Um, so those are cool. There's, you know, some of the more common quote unquote Grand Corps. Battersby, which is a pretty unusual one with the way it's like a tubular shaped runners there. Um, Schrader Automotive, again, pretty unusual. I don't know, let me go down the line forever and ever. There's Offies, um, this is cool because this is Nixon. A lot of Nixon stuff you'd see his boat, but that one doesn't have tilted uh, runners. I think this is Freeman or something like that was the name of with the with the balance tubes that are like copper. Um, it's missing the tag. I think there's usually a tag that goes there, but that's an unusual one that I've been after for a while. So that's cool to have one of them. I'll probably hold on to that. Again, more Navarros, 3-2. The dog oh, What's this one? That's kind of interesting. It's a Navarro Racing. Oh, and someone welded a... I don't know if... Yeah, it looks like somebody, unless they were made that way, welded an extra carb into it, but it's done really well. I just noticed that. That's but wild. it's a Navarro Racing 2-2, and somebody added a third carb. So there you go. One of one custom Navarro Racing. We'll make up some... That's how it should have looked originally. Yeah, so somebody added that. No, this is even a different one, because it oh, doesn't yeah. have the heat risers on the that racing model. Whoa. Who knows? But you can see it's an old one, because they got all the stamps yeah. for the numbers on them. You're going to have to hunt for a dog bone like everyone else. Yeah, this is a Navarro dog bone. Um, they're, like, impossible to find the original dog bone. Supposedly, the... Dog bones that are reproduction don't fit the original intakes, so it's kind of a problem. So um, that's a neat one. Um, like I said, the racing model with no heat risers. Hexagon tool, that's a pretty unusual one. Um, it's like a mid-rise, if you want it, for lack of a better term. Sharp. I've wanted one of these sharps for a while. This is like an early sharp. You can see the, how the collector is there. Really cool. Just a neat shaped intake. I think it's pretty early, so that's one I'll hold on to. I don't have one of them and been wanting one for a while. Um, Boring Edmunds custom. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of Edmunds. Those are honestly like one, some of the best street intakes because they'd set back for the generator. Uh, we got a, what, four of them there? Yep. So those are all different designs and styles. Edmunds custom, just normal Edmunds. So those are all great ones. We, we get them all the time. We love selling them. We tell a lot of our customers if you want. Um, if you want an intake that'll just work with basically all the stock stuff, those are pretty much some of the best ones. They're iconic. Uh, we got a fixed in air cleaner there. There's an Eddie Myers reproduction top. And then I think a fixed in bottom there. Just extra stuff that we got. Offy Grand Corps, we Pattersfield covered all that stuff. So heads, goodness gracious. This is where it gets a little ridiculous. Yeah, it gets a little hard. So to show some of the stuff, there's, we'll just run through real quick. There's Edelbrock block letters, original ones. Three sets. Three sets of them floating around. Um, I think I have a spare set, so we'll probably sell all three sets. Maybe one set's better than mine. Um, Smith Jones, those are very unusual. Uh, Eddie Myers, I have an NOS reproduction set. Um, I might go through here, and if there's another set that's um, nice, I may keep them because I have a couple of Eddie Myers intakes, so just if I ever put something together. Angle Britson is the really, really unusual one. I showed that when we were going through all the stuff at the estate. They're two piece. These look kind of like the roofs. I have another set of heads that are similar. Engel Britson V16, they say on their dual plug, two piece heads, obviously very, very old. Um, you can tell by, if you flip that one in the front there over, you can see the age to it. I think the other one was kind of cleaned up, but I mean, you could see these. These are not something that was just reproduced and just put out. I mean, these are old, 
old casting. So we'd love to find more information if anybody, anybody that's nerdy about this stuff has ever heard of it or knows anything. I did a Google search. I could not find anything related to Engel Britson flathead V8 stuff. So if somebody knows something about it, I'd love to hear about it because it's just, that's the fascinating part is finding something that there's no other known ones. Maybe Speedway has them, they probably do, but um, never seen another set. So there's some Stellings V860s, which are really cool. I'll try and walk between you and talk. Um, sharp block letters, again, I think I have a pair of them. These are really cool, I've always wanted a set of Oseki racing uh, heads that are in really, really nice shape with the manifolds, which are kind of hard to find. So I'll hold on to those. There's two sets of these thick in marine heads. Um, I have a set on the uh, Pagoda City Coupe and I love them. Um, I'll probably sell both sets. Maybe I'll hold on to one set for the wall. I don't know yet. Backup set, so to speak. Spares. Yeah, Edmunds Custom, a couple sets of them. There's those cutaway heads that are from like an old dealership. Super cool. Uh, when we were at the Auburn Museum, they had a set that was sitting on an engine. Um, that was kind of like one of my first times seeing those. So they're, they're chromed, which is really cool. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. They're really neat, but I don't know. So I have to, some of this stuff I have to decide. Uh, Schrader, SAE, uh, that matches the, the intake that's here. So I'll probably hold on to those to have a set. Grand Core heads, I've always wanted a set of them. I missed out on a set in a collection we bought in Pittsburgh where they were supposed to be in the estate and they got, they magically went missing after we showed up to buy everything. So, psyched out of them. Allstate heads, almost every set of them is cracked. These are no different. Um, Two of them are welded, right? One of them is welded and this is what happens to them. So you can see this one was cracked and welded at some point and then was never cleaned up. Um, they had a poor casting on all these Allstate Speedway, all the ones that have the fins that are like this, uh, be careful with them. They almost always are cracked. You can see this one. Same as the Pagoda City Coupe. <laughs> is cracked right here around this casting and that's what would have happen on business. So, Pagoda City Coupe, I had a set of these on and the, I think my one is okay, but my other one was leaking and got worse and worse and worse and I had to pull them off. Um, this one looks like it is also cracked. Oh yeah, you can see it. That one's really bad. You see that one is cracked there right in the spark plug. So notice the theme here. So be very careful when you're buying all state heads because they're almost always cracked. If they, if they didn't crack yet, they're going to crack after running them. That's what I found on my coupe. They, my heads weren't leaking. And after a couple seasons, they, the one head got worse and worse and worse. So it's just a, these are literally wall hangers. We'll sell them probably because I have my wall hangers <laughs> already. Um, some wines, there's actually some NOS wines in here, there's some NOS Navarros in here oh, also. The Navarros are over there. Over there, we have the boxes for them, which is really cool. But they came in, he just pulled them out. There's some Evans in there, which are cool. Some of them need rep repaired. Some of these heads need repaired where they were starting to be repaired. Um, so we'll have to either finish to repair or sell them as is. These are really cool. So Cyclone 21 stud for a 37, 38 block. Those are really neat. I'll probably hold on to those. Hot and Sullivan, there's three of them. Um, the one's a little different here. Um, I guess he got a spare because this one has a chipped water neck, but I think it can still be used. It's just got to be careful. Uh, Tattersfield Baron, very unusual. I'll probably hold on to those. Fenton, Offenhauser. Um, There's one of those Speedway heads. Yep. Um, only one and a champion head. And then a set of Kugel Rockets. They're cast iron fin heads. The heaviest heads in the world. Heavy as heck, but they're cast iron, so you won't have to worry about them having as much issues. I have a set of those. We'll probably list them up for sale. Um, so yeah, that's an incredible amount of stuff. <laughs> so that's a quick rundown, a quick rundown of probably one of our better, this is probably one of our best as far as quality goes. Might not be our most quantity, um, but this is probably our biggest, best quality um, estate that we've had. I mean, just to get a chance to buy this much of speed equipment in one shot, that's all the stuff we're into, is pretty incredible. So we're very thankful that we were able to make this deal happen, get this stuff home. And um, the gentleman that owned this stuff liked the idea, just like we preach in the videos, this stuff I'm gonna keep a little bit and 90% of it's gonna get recirculated out there and get put back on the cars and get used and into other collections and all that stuff. And that's what's important that this stuff doesn't get just cast away um, and it gets used and appreciated. So 
that's what we're gonna be doing. Mike's got a lot of work to do. We all have a lot of work to do, and uh, we'll get this stuff out there. So make sure you check out the website, um, watch our Instagram, and then come see us at Coral Isle. We'll have a bunch of this stuff at Coral Isle that we'll be bringing out there. And if you want first shot, some of this stuff, definitely come out and see us or uh, check out our, uh, our sales pages. So that's my sales pitch. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Now I'm gonna go roll around in this stuff like it's uh, Scrooge McDuck. Thanks guys, catch you later.